English 1A, Reading and Composition, Researching, Part 2. Digital Archives. Archives are a good place to find primary sources, the text of poems, books, speeches, and historical significant documents, photograph, and political cartoons. The materials in these sites are usually limited to official documents and older works because of copyright laws. Government and news sites. For current topics, both government and news sites can prove useful. Blogs. A blog is a site that contains text or multimedia entries usually written and maintained by one person with comments contributed by readers. Wikis. A wiki is a collaborative website with many contributions and with contents that may change frequently. Wikipedia is one of the most frequently consulted wikis. It may be helpful for common knowledge, facts, or current information that isn't covered elsewhere. Many scholars do not consider Wikipedia and wikis in general to be appropriate sources for college research. Authorship is not limited to experts. Articles may be written by amateurs who are not well informed. Use of the search tools. In addition to articles, books, and online sources, you may want to consult references such as encyclopedias and almanacs. Citations and scholarly works can also lead you to additional sources. Reference works. The reference section of the library holds both general and specialized encyclopedias, dictionaries, almanac, atlas, and biographical references. General reference works are good places to check facts and get basic information. American National Biography, National Geographic Atlas of the World, the New Encyclopedia Britannica, the Oxford English Dictionary, Statistical Abstracts of the United States. You should rarely use them in your final paper because most instructors expect you to rely on more specialized sources. Specialized reference works often explore a topic in depth, usually in the form of articles written by leading authorities. They offer a quick way to gain an expert's overview of a complex topic. Many specialized works are available, including these. Contemporary Authors, Encyclopedia of Bioethics, Encyclopedia of Crime and Justice, Encyclopedia of Psychology, Encyclopedia of World Environmental History, International Encyclopedia of Communication, New Encyclopedia of Africa. Bibliographies and Scholarly Citation as Shortcuts. Scholarly books and articles list the works the author has cited, usually at the end. These lists can be useful shortcuts to additional reliable sources on your top. Conduct field research if appropriate. Your own field research can enhance or be the focus of a writing project. You might want to interview a local politician about a current issue such as the use of alternative energy sources. Note. Colleges and universities often require researchers to submit projects to an institutional review board if the research involves human subjects outside of a classroom setting. Before administering a survey or conducting other field work, check with your instructor to see if IRB approval is required. Evaluating Sources since there are many sources to choose from, determine what kinds of quality sources you need and select those truly worthy of your time and attention. Next, read them with an open mind and a critical eye. Think about how sources might contribute to your writing. How you plan to use sources will affect how you evaluate them. Not every source must directly support your thesis. Sources can have other functions in a paper. They can provide background information or context for your topic, explain terms or concepts that your reader might not understand, provide evidence for your argument, lend authority to your argument, offer alternative interpretations, and counter evidence to your argument. Select sources worth your time and attention. This section explains how to scan through the results from the most promising sources and how to preview them 
to see whether they are likely to live up to your expectations and meet your needs. Scanning search results. Databases. Most databases list at least the following information. Title and brief description, how relevant. Date, how current. Name of periodical, how scholarly. Length, how extensive in coverage. Many databases allow you to sort your list of results by relevance or date. Sorting may help you scan the information more efficiently. Library catalogs. A library's catalog usually lists enough basic information about books, periodicals, DVDs, and other material to give you a first impression. A book's title and date of publication, for example, will often be your first clue as to whether the book is worth consulting. Web search engines. Because anyone can publish a website, legitimate sources and unreliable sources live side by side online. As you scan through search results, look for the following clues about the probable relevance, currency, and reliability of a site. But be aware that the clues are by no means foolproof. The title, keywords, and lead-in text, how relevant, a date, how current, an indication of the site's sponsor or purpose, how reliable, the URL, especially the domain name extension, for example, .com, .ed, .gov, or .org, how relevant, how reliable. Determining if a source is scholarly. For many college assignments, you will be asked to use scholarly sources. These are written by experts for a knowledgeable audience and usually go into more depth than books and articles written for a general audience. To determine if a source is scholarly, look for the following. Formal language and presentation. Authors with academic or scientific credentials. Footnotes or bibliography documenting the work cited by the author in the source, original research and interpretation rather than a summary of other people's works, quotations from an analysis of primary sources in humanity disciplines such as literature, history, and philosophy, a description of research methods or a review of related research in the science and social sciences. Selecting appropriate versions of electronic sources. An online source may appear as an abstract or excerpt or a full text article or book. It is important to distinguish among these versions of sources and to use a complete version of a source for your research. Abstracts and excerpts are shortened versions of complete works. An excerpt is the first few sentences or paragraphs of a newspaper or magazine article. Abstracts and excerpts often provide enough information for you to determine whether the complete article would be useful for your paper and they generally do not contain enough information to function alone as sources in a research paper. A full text work may appear online as a PDF file or as a HTML file. The PDF file will include page numbers for your citations. Read with an open mind and a critical eye. As you begin reading the source you have chosen, keep an open mind. Do not let your personal beliefs prevent you from listening to new ideas and opposing viewpoints. Your research question, not a snap judgment about the question, should guide your reading. When you read critically, you are not necessarily judging an author's works harshly. You are simply examining its assumptions, assessing its evidence, and weighing its conclusions. Distinguishing between primary and secondary sources. As you begin assessing evidence in a source, determine whether you are reading a primary or a secondary source. Primary sources are original documents such as letters, diary, photographs, legislature's bills, 
laboratory studies, field research reports, and eyewitness accounts. Secondary sources are commentaries on primary sources, another writer's opinion about or interpretation of a primary source. Being alert for signs of bias. Some sources are more objective than others. Even publications that are considered reputable can be editorially biased. For example, USA Today, National Review, and The Economist are all credible sources, but they are also likely to interpret events quite differently from one another. If you are uncertain about a periodical special interest, consult magazines for libraries. To check for bias in a book, see what book reviewers have written about it. A reference librarian can help you locate reviews and assess the credibility of both the book and the reviewers. Evaluating all sources. Academic English. When you research on the web, it is easy to ignore views different from your own. Web pages that appeal to you will often link to other pages that support the same viewpoint. If your sources all seem to agree with you and with one another, seek out opposing views and evaluate them with an open mind. Checking for signs of bias. Does the author or publisher endorse political or religious views that could affect objectivity? Is the author or publisher associated with a special interest group such as Greenpeace or the National Rifle Association that might present only one side of an issue? Are alternative views presented and addressed? How fairly does the author treat opposing views? Does the author's language show signs of assessing an argument? What is the author's central claim or thesis? How does the author support this claim with relevant or sufficient evidence or with just a few anecdotes or emotional examples? Are statistics consistent with those you encounter in other sources? Have they been used fairly? It is possible to lie with statistics by using them selectively or by omitting details. Does the author explain where the statistics come from? Are any of the author's assumptions questionable? Does the author consider opposing arguments and refute them persuasively? Does the author fall prey to any logical fallacies? Like publishers, some authors are more objective than others. If you have reason to believe that a writer is particularly biased, you will want to assess his or her argument with special care. Assessing the author's argument. In nearly all academic writing, there is some element of argument, so don't be surprised to encounter experts who disagree. When you find areas of disagreement, you will want to read each source's argument with special care, testing them with your own critical intelligence. Evaluating Web Sources Authorship Does the website or documents have an author? You may need to do some checking and scrolling to find the author's name. If there is an author, you can tell whether he or she is knowledgeable or credible. When the author's qualifications aren't listed on the site itself, look for links to the author's homepage, which may provide evidence of his or her interest and expertise. This concludes Researching Part 2.